So tonight we're going to have, we have a wonderful opportunity to, to have Shark Tank tonight. This is uh, the second, uh, the penultimate uh, exp uh, event for our uh, Entrepreneurship Week. And so tomorrow is the Entrepreneur Sip Social. Is that how you say that right? Entrepreneur Sip Social. It's a, like sip and socialize. You guys are just like nodding, but you guys are the ones that are supposed to, where's my, our team? <laughs> that knows. Is that what it's called, Emily? Entrepreneur SIP. So where is that located? Do you know? It's at Huntsman Hall. Yeah, yeah it's at Huntsman Hall in the courtyard. Okay, uh, tomorrow. So it's at 5, 5, oh, we're good, we're good. Okay, so um, this is how tonight's going to go. Uh, the first thing, well, we're, the first thing is we're going to recognize some businesses, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, businesses that were in Shark Tank last year. Then we're going to introduce our judges, who we're so excited to have be here. And then we're going to also, uh, we're going to have our, our Shark Tank pitch event. So there will be six teams that will be pitching. And we're giving out thousands of dollars tonight to these teams. And so they'll be pitching for that money. Uh, during the, uh, when the judges are deliberating uh, for these pitches, after these six pitches, they'll have two minutes to pitch, so really short, and then four minutes Q&A. And the judges have promised to be succinct in their questions. Um, they'll also be, have an opportunity to meet with them after the fact. And so we'll talk about that later on. During, while the judges are deliberating, we have four pitchers here as well. So let's see. I saw a few of you. We've got Lori. Is Lori here? Not yet. OK, so we've got four people who have just started businesses. We've got Megan, Lori, Ryan, and Trevor. I, th I saw Trevor walk in. I think. Anyway, so they're going to pitch during this. These are people who just launched businesses, and they're going to be pitching for $500, and you're going to vote on who wins. And so get your Kahoot out uh, later on in this and get ready to go for that. Uh, we're going to come back. We have also with us some incredible high school students that we'll have recognized, and we're going to give them all some, uh, some e-week swag. Uh, these are, we'll talk about that later on. And then you'll have a chance for some ice cream after we, we give out the awards. So that's kind of how the evening is going to go. One thing about the judges is we decided to save a little bit of your time here and also let the judges have more personal conversation. So what's going to happen right after this, which is a little bit different than normal, is the judges are going to meet with all the Shark Tank teams over here. And, uh, and they're going to give them some personal advice, and then they'll come out for ice cream after that. And so you can head on out and meet with them out there, and that's the way that, so they're going to interact with these, uh, these students first. And so make sure you kind of, if you want to meet any of them, wait around and get some ice cream, that's what you can do. Does that sound like a plan? Okay, great. Uh, nobody even said anything if it sounded like a plan. But, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about, let's go to the first slide. Oh, right here. There we go. This is Emily, and, and she is uh, she's helping me up here. So if you have any questions, you can text them to Emily. If you don't have her number, uh, she'll, Paige can give it to you. So that's what you can do. All right, so tonight, the first thing we want to do is we want to talk about these businesses. Here at the Center for Entrepreneurship, we have a lot of businesses that we know about that have come out of the center. And we, we, re recognize, or we realized recently that we need to do a better job of recognizing the success, the success that these businesses have had. So we've had a lot of businesses that have passed, you know, uh, thousands or tens of thousands or even a million dollars in sales. And we've talked about them, but we are going to start recognizing these businesses. So if you have a business that is that is making money, come and talk to us. We're going to start cataloging that. And after you hit certain milestones, there'll be different things that you'll be given. Today, we're going to start by just honoring four businesses that we know that were in Shark Tank last year. And so we have, uh, if you know these, the brands are Thrift Jam, Bison Paddles, Battle Ball, and Blue Collar Holler. Now, these businesses, um, why don't we have them come on up? I, I told you we were going to do it all uh, individually, but we're going to have you all come up at one time. So Ellie and Logan, come on up for Thrift Jam. You've given them a round of applause. <clears throat> and Cody, could you come up here for Blue Collar Holler? Give him a round of applause. <clears throat> Did Dan make it? Is Dan here? Oh, there, there, Dan. Uh, Dan and his partner, Colin, is not here right now, but Dan, come up here for Bison Paddles. And Jared, come on up here uh, for Battle Ball. 
All right, so what we're gonna do from, from now on is there will be levels at 1,000, that means your business has launched, 10,000. These, all of these people have, uh, since Shark Tank, have hit $50,000 in sales, and actually most of them, they've hit $100,000 or more in sales. The most I know is 250,000. So uh, they can tell you if, uh, if you want, if they want to, that, that who that person is or who that team is. But these people are making it happen. And so we want to honor them. So what we're going to do at the $50,000 level is, uh, let's grab their jackets and bring them on out. They're going to get, uh, these are Patagonia, right? These are Patagonia jackets. And so, and so they're going to get Patagonia jackets. And these jackets are only available for these guys. <clears throat> So what we're doing is we're actually going to give them these jackets and we'll take them right back because we've got to get this approved. And, and we're going to put a, an embroidery patch on there. But this patch will only be for people who've passed $50,000 in sales. And then we have some really cool things that we're developing for those who are 100000 So we've got these are, are at least four of the teams that have done that. And I know there's a number more or uh, quite a few more. And this is what you can do. This is what we want to see with the Shark Tank people next year as well, that they'll come back and we'll honor them. So that's, these are all, um, these are for milestones for people who hit this while they're active students. Let's give these guys a round of applause for the 50,000. <laughs> Club. Hold up your jackets. I don't get a jacket because I've only made like 10 with my business, so. <laughs> but it's a good game, so. All right, thanks everyone. Let's give those, well you can, you can take them to your seats and then give them back. We'll give you, oh, you'll give them to Paige right now. Give them to, we'll get those patches on there, we'll get them approved. Sometimes it takes a while to get things approved. All right, so that's the way that works in a bureaucracy. If you wanna go and petition the marketing department and say you gotta move faster, I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the Shark Tank portion of our event. We have six incredible teams here representing students from you know, all over campus, all you know, levels in, in, in their schooling, and uh, that are gonna be pitching for this money. Each of these sharks have access or have control over a certain pot of money, and we're, they're gonna divvy that out, and then we're gonna give out these checks tonight. And so first things first is I wanna introduce the judges. So we have four people here. Two of these people are some of my favorite people, and then there's AJ and James that are here with them. <laughs> so um, first I wanna introduce James. James Davenport uh, is an incredible support for Utah State University. Uh, he, uh, he, he runs our Founders Board. He is incredibly supportive of the SEED program. He, he co-founded a, 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 a financial advising wealth management firm. Is that accurate to say that? Working with business owners. But he is someone who loves Utah State and we're incredibly grateful to have James with us today. <clears throat> Next is Amy Reese Anderson. I once said that Amy Reese Anderson sold her business for over 300 million and she said it's 377 million. So she wants you to make sure um, that, that not to round that down. But um, so She's known for a lot of great things, uh, that for, her, for her company, uh, MediConnect, uh, for her awards as, uh, as Entrepreneur of the Year. Um, she also married somebody from my hometown, and there's like seven of us, so that's incredible. So we did both very well coming from CUNA and marrying well above ourselves, so congratulations to both of us for doing that. Um, but I also want to say about Amy is that she's also an inspiration. One thing she talks about a lot is her vision board, and I can't tell you how many men, and especially young women, have been inspired by that idea of a vision board uh, and, and really taking control of your future, and we just love having Amy with us today. <clears throat> so AJ Rounds is someone also who loves Utah State University. All, all of them do, of course. Uh, AJ is uh, co-founder of Rev Road which I have to describe this as an organization that combines the best parts of, of any organization that supports venture, venture uh, firms. So they are real partners of, of helping firms go from, you know, from, we'd say from struggling to thriving. Um, and so we're really uh, grateful to have AJ here. He's been an incredible partner with us and uh, he's been involved with a ton of different organizations uh, and bringing them up to, from oil to gas to lots of different areas. And so we're really grateful to have AJ with us. <clears throat> Shalon Keller uh, uh, is 
a partner of mine in crime. We do a lot of things together. Uh, Shalon was with the U.S. Air Force uh, for a long time, you know, really just kind of running that uh, over there at Hill Air Force Base, making sure that things were battle ready, these planes. Uh, she's incredibly organized and, and detail oriented, which is why we work together, because I'm not. And, um, and uh, she was also just made assistant professor, which you may not know, but that's a big deal. So congratulations to her for that. <clears throat> I, I, did I say assistant? I meant associate, so I, whatever. But I will say one thing personal. Um, so a, a few years ago, my mom passed away, and my mom was one of my closest friends. And one of the things I really enjoyed was that she, uh, whenever I was watching a sporting event, she would always text me and say, do you see what's going on? And so we'd text back and forth about a sporting event. And when she died, I lost that opportunity to have that person. But now Shalon does that for me, and I'm really grateful for that. So Shalon uh, is my, my sports buddy as well. So th th w w thank you for joining with us, Shalon. Thanks. Congratulations. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to have six pitches, two minutes pitch, four minutes Q&A. Oh, uh, Emily and I are going to be the bad guys. She'll probably be the bad guy. I'll be like, no, give them a little bit more time. Um, but we need to be done at four minutes. So we're going to have these four, six groups come out here. They're going to introduce themselves, have, you know, sit right tight, and uh, we're going to start with PhotoHive. We are PhotoHive, an online platform designed to simplify how memories are captured and shared for endurance racers. We make it easy for racers to get photos of their important moments by taking care of everything behind the scenes, creating a smoother process for race directors, photographers, and participants. Here's how it works. When a race director signs up with PhotoHive, we match them with a photographer for their race. Once the race has happened and been photographed, the photographer will edit and upload all the photos directly to PhotoHive, where they will be automatically tagged. This allows athletes to easily access their photos by entering their race number, instantly being able to see every photo taken of them at the event. This makes it easy to download and share their photos without having to search through thousands of pictures. This benefits each and every party involved. Race directors get traction and marketing, the photographers get contract work, and athletes receive photos of themselves quickly and easily. PhotoHive has deals in the works with many running and bike races, Utah High School Mountain Bike League, and RunnerCard, a service with nearly 500 races nationwide. We make money from marketing, photographer sourcing, and commission on photo sales should the race director decide to charge for photos. And that's PhotoHive.pro, a simplified online platform that enables you to capture and share your life-changing experiences. All right, I'm Joshua Matheson. I'm Cade Matheson. And we are PhotoHive. So PhotoHive currently has 68,000 photos uploaded to their database and has had 1,000 photos downloaded so far. We have already races sold for 2023. Here you can see our financial projections. Uh, we don't have time to go over them right now, but that's if you want to ask questions about that, it's up there. And um, we're asking for $3,000 to help us finish up the software features we need for monetization. And with that, we'd like to help. We'd like to invite everyone to help PhotoHive become the hub for endurance racers to capture and share their life-changing experiences. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any questions? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the competition in this space. Is, I mean, you know, like Disneyland, you got all their stuff built in. Is there a lot of competition for you guys? How do you how do you differentiate? Yeah, so there is competition right now. There's a few different competitors in different spaces. Each race is kind of different. So you have like Marathon Photo that does a lot of marathons, or uh, Roots and Rain that does a lot of mountain biking in the in the in Europe. But the entire market has a very low concentration, so it's not a big problem to get into the market right now. And on a side note, with that, we do expect to be able to compete because the companies that do have automatic tagging like we do, which is like kind of the base of the product. They're very expensive to either race directors or participants, and we can make that free. Great job, you guys. Quick question. Um, software development development is really expensive. Is $3,000 going to get you to a finished product? We do the software development. Yeah, so We just need something to get us through to it, essentially. Yeah, $3,000 is to keep us alive while we do all of our machine learning and web dev. And Lots of serial and Twinkies, then. 
<laughs> sure. Do I understand this correctly? You, don't, you have yet to make sales. Basically, yes. So we have, well, we have races that have been contracted to us, and we already have a user base, but we haven't made the monetization features for us to be able to actually make money from it. And that's where the $3,000 is directly going next, is to finish up all, everything we need to monetize ourselves. There are a few companies that are interested in the marketing, which is the monetization. But like you said, nothing's actually happened yet. So you're right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So typically, most businesses that are successful have three really strong marketing funnels. Remind me what those were, because they went by pretty fast. One was photographers, but tell me, tell me your marketing channels. So our marketing channels would be direct sales to the races mainly. That's the biggest way we can make money. But then we can go to uh, Facebook and do ads and such like that to get, um, to get the uh, participants on board as, as well. And then we can go through email marketing as well. Any last questions? All right, that's PhotoHive. Thank you. All right, our next is, oh, did you guys take the clicker? <laughs> okay. All right, trying to sabotage the competition. All right, we have now Avid Epoxy with uh, Parker and Kaler. Come on in. Thank you. All right, my name is Kaler, and this is my partner. Hi, I'm Parker Benson, and we are Avid Epoxy. We install the best looking and the best quality floors. We turn your dirty old garage into the best looking feature of your home. started this business about a year ago it took us four days to do one floor and so while that's normal against uh, other epoxy contractors this year we figured out a process and we've invested in our materials to be able to do a floor in just one day so we come in at 7 a.m. grind the floor and the floor is finished by 4 o'clock so after we found the proof of concept um, we first started the back of our trucks and then we invested in a trailer, we invested in the best trailer and the best product or the best equipment possible. And the next year we plan to go full time. We plan to work with contractors to have jobs in advance. And for our five year, we plan to franchise in other locations. So in January of this year, Parker and I flew down to Las Vegas and we went to an expo called the World of Concrete. People fly in all over the world to come to this and we learned a ton just networking with people, with vendors, exhibitors, and just finding out more about the system. And so if we were to ask for any funding tonight, we want to further our education. And so this floor is an epoxy system, and a lot of people use these in their basements, um, their mud rooms, their laundry rooms, and we want to know how to do this. So professional training uh, to do this floor is what our ask is for tonight. So here is some previous pictures of what we have done. Um, we are booked out for two months, and we would like you guys to help us to continue that. Um, thank you so much for your time tonight. So my question is, how do you avoid just becoming a commodity? Because I get you know, three or four of these on my Instagram or stuff like that. How, how are you unique that you don't just become a price for? Yeah, so we're unique because we can now perform a one-day floor, and that's beneficial to the consumer because they're not having to leave all their garage belongings outside overnight. What also makes us different is the guys who are doing this tonight is the same guy showing up on your floor doing it that next day. So we're the ones doing it. We're the ones doing the floor. We're there starting it, and we're there ending it. What are your rough profit margins? So our we had forty thousand dollars in sales last year. Um, 
and that is with our equipment. Um, we're self-funded at all, so we went from the back of our truck and now we're to where we're at today. So those forty thousand dollars of sales were in four months um, with part-time work. So we only could work four months out of the year when we were starting because epoxy cures at sixty degrees. Our new system cures at twenty-five, so we can work nine months of the year. You had me with glitter, by the way. <laughs> Um, is the reason for wanting that class because you can make more money doing that specialized? I mean, like this, yeah, you see it everywhere, but that one you had on the last slide, is there a big difference in what you can charge on the revenues for doing that more specialized? Yes, so this is in your garage, of course. Not many people do a flake floor in your home. And so we want to, we're in the garage now, we want to get into people's homes. And so by learning that process, it is a lot more expensive. So it's going to boost our revenue. What pivot opportunities do you see in your future? So more of our pivots are to go through tables. Um, there's a lot of, I guess, demand for the, ta the epoxy tables. Um, instead of doing marble, you do like that photo, but on a table. Um, and so that's one of our pivot opportunities. Really quick, what marketing channels have been successful for you thus far? Is it word of mouth or social media? We run a lot off social media. Um, we do a lot of ads off Facebook and Instagram. Um, that's We can mo run more of a target market off those. Um, it gives us a bunch of details to target the um, audience that we want. All right, let's give a round of applause for David Epoxy. All right, let's uh, give a warm welcome to Tommy from Sniffs. Come on up, Tommy. and you're ready to go. Next thing you know, you guys are at the restaurant planning your wedding before you even get your drinks. <laughs> this is the kind of confidence that Sniffs is bringing to baseball players across the country, but in a little bit of a different way. So I want you guys to think to all of the baseball games that you've watched in your life and to think if you've ever seen a baseball player play without a glove. The answer to that is no, because a baseball glove is a baseball player's best friend. It's what helps them chase their dreams and it's a crucial part of the game. The potential lifespan of one of these gloves is 10 years, but the average baseball player only uses it for about three years. Now, why is that? Because this happens. The leather dries out, gets cracked, and the laces break. And this is because the traditional glove conditioners on the market that baseball players would use to condition their gloves are not very good. It's like a little paste you scoop out with your fingers, rub it on the glove, smells nasty, get your hands dirty, and it takes about a day to dry. So this is where Sniffs comes in to solve the problem. Sniffs is a spray scented glove conditioner that is revolutionizing the way that baseball players take care of their glove. It's much easier to use because it's a spray, so you spray it on the glove all over and it dries within minutes. So not only is it faster and more efficient, but we have coconut and bubblegum scents to give baseball players that confidence knowing that they smell good, so they're gonna play good. <laughs> so join me in helping baseball players across the country show some love to their glove with Sniffs. Thank you. Okay, I have to ask, besides coconut and bubble gum, what are the next flavors in the lineup? So everyone has been saying they want blue raspberry, watermelon, and mango. So those are the ones that I'm working on. Did you play baseball? I did, whole life playing baseball. And this is not a product anywhere. Like, all the products are just really bad. Yep, so I never conditioned my glove, and so that's why I made this, to make it fun, so people actually do it. Awesome. 
Do you have any endorsements from current baseball players? Yes, so I actually have a slide right here. These are the people that I've worked with. Um, on the left right here, his name is Max Clark. He's the number one high school player in the country. He's projected to be the number three overall draft pick in the MLB draft this year. Um, this guy right here, his name is Sam Carlson. He's with the Seattle Mariners, um, the Utah Utes softball and baseball team. And then I don't know if anyone's heard of the Savannah Bananas. They're the Harlem Globetrotters of baseball. They travel the country. So if you haven't heard of them, you got to look them up. They're amazing. Have you have you done any testing to figure out what how long does it elongate the use of the glove? I mean, like, what's the return on the investment yeah. for the person? And then, do you have any revenues? Yeah. So I haven't had enough time, obviously, to test it. I've only been launched for about two months now. But I actually took one of my old gloves from my dad, and I basically revived his glove. So it was super dry, super dried out sprayed the, the conditioner on it and now it's good as new. So I'm not sure exactly time-wise how much it can save the glove, but it, it kind of prolongs the life for sure. So how profitable is it? How, what does it cost to make one? What can you sell it for? And mm -hmm. then do you have any sales? Yes, so it costs $1.30 per bottle to make and then I sell it for ten ninety nine. And over two months that I've been launched, I've sold about 200 bottles, so around $2,000 in sales. And how many employees? Just me. <laughs> what is your scaling strategy? Um, so scaling strategies, a lot of it is um, comes with marketing. I am hoping to hire on more people to help me specifically with marketing. Um, I'm planning on pivoting and making a cleat slash bag spray, kind of the same kind of thing, but it appeals more to the moms of baseball players. So your shoe spray. Yeah. Shoe spray, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, scaling, kind of pivoting comes a lot with it. I'll buy it without game. even like needing baseball. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. All right, any last questions? All right, give a hand to Tommy. This is All right, well everyone give a warm welcome to Maddie Larson with Mad Granola. Judges, sharks, audience. Have you ever wandered through the grocery store looking at different products? Well, you may be surprised, but most healthy products are actually consumed with added sugars, processed oils, ingredients that we don't even know how to pronounce. After struggling to find a healthy granola, I decided to take matters into my own hand and created Mad Granola. Mad Granola is known to be a healthy granola that is soft and chewy, has clean and simple ingredients, and provides a healthy option for audiences. Um, with all the healthy ingredients that it offers, it provides a great option for people that are looking for a healthy option, and it's great for people that want healthy ideas, and I love it to put in smoothies, yogurt, and basically if there's a will, there's a way to eat granola. Now, Mad Granola didn't have to be the first business, granola business, but it just happens to be the best. With, I, with Mad Granola's success, I have sold bags over the United States, teamed up with influencers, sold out at several farmers markets, and started building relationships with retail stores. Now Mad Granola's loyal customers are drawn to the natural ingredients and homemade touch. These are the two stores that I was in in my hometown. Now with your investment, I would like to expand my company with getting a trademark buying in bulk, getting a new product line, and increasing my marketing sales. With your help, with your help, I'm determined to grow my business. We can make Mad Granola a national brand and make it to every home in the United States. Thank you. You talked about being in, partnering with some retail stores. What stores are you in so far? Yeah, so I'm in two stores in Morgan, Utah. They're called Heinz and Grounds for Coffee, and I have been talking to Lee's to get into their store. So did you change the name? Sorry, what was that? Did you change the name before? No, it was always Mad Granola. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Um, what makes this, I mean, love granola, so this yeah. is awesome, right? Yeah, what you. makes this unique? 
So mad granola is actually soft and chewy rather than the hard and crunchy that you normally find. And the ingredients are clean and simple. There's no added sugars or processed oils, and it's made with all clean and simple ingredients. How do you keep a shelf stable? And then, again, what does it cost and what can you sell it for? So it costs me to make a six ounce bag $2.29. I sell it for $6, so I'm making $3.75. So I put it in a bag and I seal it and it lasts good for about three months. You can actually freeze it too and then it will last good after that. So I love that you said it's soft granola because I don't like the hard ones on your teeth, but mm -hmm. how do I know if I'm walking through the store that yours is soft and not hard? Like how, what, how yeah. do you educate people on that? So that will go with into the investment. I would love to put more effort into increasing sales on paid advertising just to show that my granola is different, better, and special, and to showcase that it's not like other ones at the store. Maddie, you said you would use the money to get intellectual property trademark. Yeah. Is the trademark the right avenue, or should you go for a patent, or do you have a trade secret as it relates to your recipe? Yeah. What is the best investment for intellectual property at this time? So I've been talking to a lawyer and they suggested doing a trademark just to protect my logo and my brand, but doing a patent would also be a great idea to protect the soft and chewy taste. So I think it'd be great to get more advice and to put that decision more into effort. All right, any last questions? All right, thank you. Oh, did you have one, AJ? Yeah, I was just wondering, I mean, out of all the products in the whole world, why, why granola? I'm just curious. Yeah, so actually my little brother became celiac, um, and I kind of just started experimenting with different recipes, and so I made it for him, and I brought it up to my college roommates, and they fell in love with it, and they're like, you should sell it. So actually at the last farmer's market was the first time I sold it, and I sold out within an hour and a half, and so that's when I decided that I actually have a business that I can make it into a career. All right, great. Thank you. All right, uh, let's give a warm welcome to Ethan Rasmussen with Ag Records. My name is Ethan Rasmussen, and I have owned and operated an agricultural consulting company for the last year and a half. During this time, I've realized a need that has, been, uh, that has not been met for small to mid-sized agricultural producers. This need is the ability to track their soil investments with their desired outcome. Currently, agricultural producers are spending 40 to 50% of their annual costs on soil improvements. And with already tight profit margins of less than 10%, every measure of increased efficiency really makes a big difference. So if we can help them understand how they can decrease their spending by about $5 an acre, the average farm size in our market is around 1,600 acres, that totals about $8,000 worth in savings. And with our annual cost of $500, that allows our company enough to grow substantially while providing our, pro our producers with enough savings to make it worthwhile. Our software was finished, most, well, finished recently, and I'd love to tell you more details if you have any questions about it. But to keep it brief, our SaaS platform uses an algorithm that combines soil testing data with customizable benchmarks set by the producers themselves. Our competitors can be broken down into four different categories. In the top left, let's see if this works. Yep, top left we've got soil testing labs, industrial agricultural processing uh, companies, fertilizer companies, and other miscellaneous platforms. The soil testing labs aren't really a worry for us because we provide soil progress evaluation and compare the soil data over time. That's not a service that they offer. These industrial agricultural companies are also not on our radar because they're focused on a completely different market. They're in the industrial, large-scale agriculture. We focus on small to mid-sized producers and focus on direct-to-consumer marketing. In the left-hand corner, we've got our fertilizer and other supplement companies. As I've talked with the CEOs and executives of these companies, I've realized that we're marketing to a different audience. They're, again, focused on this, the industrial agricultural sector, but they also have a product purchase required in order to get to their software that provides a similar service that, kind of, that we do, but it's not the same because our, our producers do not want that product purchase to be enforced. And finally, in order, uh, another with the miscellaneous softwares, we're more simple to use. We combine soil testing data with record keeping and we're compatible with a variety of soil tests. We're gaining uh, our money right now to get this company off the ground, but tonight I'm asking for $3,000 for our first year marketing efforts. 
Uh, we are currently using beta testers through the spring summer season and once we open it up to the public in 2024 we're going to be visiting soil health conferences which are offered in every single state, Google search ads and other print media which is really popular in the agricultural industry. Within the first three years we project we'll be able to generate over two million dollars annually and by the seventh year, by the end of this decade, we're bringing over 20 million dollars each year. Ag Records is revolutionizing and make, creating a more efficient system for the small to mid-sized producers. Thank you. Ethan, great job. Um, I think we saw your pitch last fall as well. You did, yes. Okay, cool. And we've changed a few things since then. Awesome. So my question to you is what traction have you seen from then until now? Yeah, absolutely. If you noticed um, back here on this slide, Redox was one of the companies that was brought up last fall, um, as a company that was doing something similar to what we were doing. Um, and so I connected with Peter Foss, who, Foss, who had worked with them, and he scheduled me a meeting with their executives. During that time, I talked to them about where we were going, and our platform was originally supposed to create a soil health score uh, for each customer. But we realized that's honestly an incredibly inefficient way to do that for us. First, that's a much larger startup cost, and these fertilizer companies are already doing that, and they create a score that promotes their product. So what we pivoted to doing was creating a, a goal-based or a benchmark-based program that really focuses on the record-keeping aspect of the soil data to help producers understand whether or not it's working. Right now, most producers have their soil record data in a three-ring binder with PDFs of their soil tests and pictures of their plot when they made the updates, but they can't really see that data over time. Um, and we were really grateful to hear from Redox that the, exactly what we had determined, they don't care about the small to mid-sized farmer. Their supplements don't make enough money for them there. Why do you want to do this? So I am a first generation producer. Um, my first company is an agricultural consulting company for har hobby farmers and uh, kind of the small acreage producers. And I think that our nation's food production system actually relies very heavily and, it need, and it's going to become very dependent on our small to mid-sized producers. The struggle is that they don't have enough tools that they need in order to be really successful. There's plenty of these industrial agricultural systems because that's where a lot of really big money is really quickly. But if we can get our small to mid-sized producers the tools that they need, I think they, have the, they definitely have the capability to really perform well for our local communities. So just for, so my understanding, do they, do yeah. you, the farmers actually take their own soil sample and then send it to you, or are you having to send people out? Correct, yes. So right now there are a lot of producers that are already taking this soil data because it's really important for them to understand what's going on in their property. But this analyzation, this kind of over time record keeping, that's what's really difficult. Um, we hope to be able to partner with some of these soil testing labs um, so that we can just have our software integrated with them um, in the future and that will become an easier, seamless way to do it. Well, I'm not a farmer myself, but I'm married to one, so. There you go. I, do you worry about the, the large farms overtaking all these little farms because it's, you know, it's a shrinking market with these small farms. I do. I do think that it's something that we need to be actively working towards is helping our local producers become more successful and more profitable because right now they don't have the tools. They're, they're really lacking that support that they need. Um, and if we do get that to them, I know that we've got local, local farmers who have the, the skills to do it. All right. Thanks, Ethan. Thanks so much for Ag Records. I believe this is the first time we've ever been like on time, so this is amazing. All right, us that's right. <laughs> We're threatening. Threats work. It's carrot or sticks. All right. So we have our our last uh, pitchers tonight. We have Bethany and Isaac with Shake That Cake. Peanut butter and jelly. Pina coladas and tiny umbrellas. Cake and ice cream. What do each of these have in common? They all go perfectly together. This last pairing sparked a business idea based off of a unique dessert. So we went and bought a flatbed trailer. And went to Lowe's a lot. <laughs> Called my handy grandpa and got to work. Most of the time. <laughs> Two months later, we had our first Shake That Cake location. And we created the cake shake. A cake shake is exactly what it sounds like. Cake blended into ice cream to make a shake. 
Utah State University has an incredible track record of launching innovative dessert businesses that have scaled nationwide. First it was Crumble Cookies, then Krispy Cones, and we believe that we can be next. Last fall, we validated our product. We did one event in August and got $2,000 in revenue from that. And then over the period of about a month and a half, we got $9,000 in organic sales, only being open in the evenings, and added four employees to our team um, to help keep up with demand. After successful market validation, we're excited to open back up to the public in just five days. We anticipate $5,000 in revenue during our first week. We are asking $2,250, which we estimate will generate $45,000, uh, will bring in $45,000 in additional income um, or additional revenue this summer. This is what some people are saying about our cake shakes, and we would love for you to try one. So they're, they're on their way. Yeah, we have two of our team members, Morgan and Adelaide, will be coming in shortly with that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, all right. We're on All right, you got some questions. So you said that the, uh, uh, you wanted 2,250 because it was it would generate 45. But what are you going to spend the 2,250 on? Yeah. So last year there was a market opportunity that we weren't able to jump on because we didn't have time. So every year Utah State is flooded with uh, about 5,000 plus FSY kids. My brother who went to FSY, he said that the the line for Aggie ice cream was like an hour long. So we think that's a really big untapped market. Um, and then we are reaching out to the fraternity and the sorority that have Kitty Corner on campus and see if they'll let us put a little pop-up location with a, a branded tent and a table of very like bare bones second location to capitalize on that. And that would cost 2250 I just want a great presentation, by the way. Very simple to understand. And I happen to like cake and ice cream, so that works well. The, 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 here they but come. Are you planning to do it as a actual like the little booths? Are you trying to do it as like a truck? How do you put or Stores, retail stores, what are you planning to do as far as locations go yeah. and how you're going to expand? Thank do you, you want to explain that? Did you hear the question? No, yeah, so um, we built this trailer as our first location because it was low overhead. Um, we're, we're trying to learn from the market because, you know, as, as just recently on Shark Tank, Crispy Cones went on, and one of their critiques was they scaled too quickly to, to the brick and mortar. So we're trying to find a balance. We eventually think a brick and mortar would be helpful because that's what cut our sales short is because of the cold weather. Um, but we want to try and keep our overhead low. I would ask another question, but I want to eat. Yeah, that is okay. <laughs> Go ahead. That speaks more than we can. Over the winter, you were going to do a hot cocoa twist to mm -hmm. your um, shake business. Mm -hmm. Tell us how that went. Um, not great. I mean, it was a great learning opportunity, but um, we realized that it wasn't really something that people go out to buy. Um, so... I don't know. We're grateful for the learning opportunity, but we, we think we probably won't do that one again. Yeah, so it was a pivot that we feel it wasn't, wasn't as profitable as Shake That Cake, so we want to focus on that. But, mm -hmm. it, was, but it, was like, it was a great learning opportunity. What flavors do you have? Expensive. So we have a strawberry shortcake, which is what you're having. It's a white cake with a strawberry sauce that we make ourselves. Um, and then we have a chocolate cake. That's the one that you're having. <laughs> and then we have a lemon blueberry. And that one, you'll have to come to the trailer next week to try. <laughs> Where is the trailer? So we're located, if you know, in North Logan, it's next to Anaya's Market oh, nice. or across from IFA. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thinking way ahead, right? You had crumble on your slide earlier. How would you scale something like this to that size? Because, I mean, ice cream and, you know, this is kind of a harder thing, right? Totally, yeah. So crumble is very product focused, right? You can deliver. Um, first off, we, we want to focus on the experience. You know, at our trailer, we have a little fire pit. We want it to be kind of a date night. That's really what we're selling. Um, we actually patterned a lot of our menu decisions off of Crumble. We really like they have a simple menu and then they have a rolling menu. So they change their flavors a lot and they just have six at a time. We currently just have three at a time, which keeps our overhead really low and our inventory is very simple. Um, so really, yeah, we, we want to scale in that way. I think franchising eventually, but we want to nail our processes before we start franchising. Is it Aggie ice cream? Out of no, curiosity? we actually it's not. We did a blind test and, and, and Farah's ice cream was the one that won. Yeah, also from Utah though. <laughs> a little awkward. We thought it's delicious, it. by the way. Fantastic. Thank so, you. Love it. All right. Any last questions? Now, we all know that Aggie ice cream is better ice cream, but Farz just works better than a shake. So, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our shakes are better than Aggie ice cream. All right. <laughs> I'm curious. I mean, it's wood. Mm -hmm. It's purposeful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. I love that. Yeah. We, we, I mean, I think that it, we try to be as sustainable as we can with our packaging. 
Um, and then down the road, we like we we have planned. You know, there's a lot of things that we want to do, but uh, kind of sustainability initiative as well. Cost and yeah, price. So our margin is 81 percent. Our cost is about a dollar fifteen. We sell it for um, between six dollars and eight dollars. Five. And they put you next day. to a fire pit, so it melts, and you have to come buy more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give a round of applause Love to it. Shake that cake. All right. I'm going to go back here with the judges. Emily and I are going to go back here. Tate is going to take over here with Paige. And those four people who have those new business ideas, they're going to do a short pitch for you, and then you're going to vote on it. So I'll let these guys kind of take over. Let me just move that over for you. There you go. OK. Okay, that was fun, so, but we want to kind of have some more pitches because we just can't get enough of them. But I want to make sure they're here. I know, Trevor, where are you? Is Trevor here? Okay, Trevor, come up here. We're going to have Trevor. Is Laurie here? Okay, come up here as well. Uh, Megan and Ryan. Did all of you come down here. So these are other student businesses we have here also at USU. Um, yeah, actually, go ahead and take a seat, you know? Take a seat in the, the shark chairs. Unless they come back, then we need to move. Um, we're going to have Trevor go first. Is that cool? Um, but before you go, before you go, at the end, this is going to be the People's Choice Award. So essentially, for them coming and pitching, they automatically won $100 for, for their businesses. But then we're going to have a People's Choice Award, which will be an additional $200 towards your business. Um, and this is how we're going to vote. So do this now, so it can be, we can do it quickly once they're all done. So if you can somehow get that tiny QR code on your phone, go there. But if not, just go to the, I think the link, yeah. Kahoot dot Kahoot something. Kahoot dot it, and then put Kahoot in that. Kahoot dot it, those and numbers. then put that in. Everybody, the more the merrier. Unless we have some limit on how many people, then it will tell us. But if you can do this, we're we're gonna just try and get as many people on here as we can, okay? And we're gonna leave it up also while you're pitching, um, so we can just get a ton and ton of people going. But we're gonna have the order go like this: Trevor, then Laurie, then Ryan, then Megan. You have two minutes. I'll sit up here and kind of watch the time. I won't like get mad at you if you go past two minutes, but try not to, okay? That cool? You guys ready for more pitches? Yeah, okay, Trevor, you, go for it. You can just use this one. Sweet. So uh, I am the founder of Adobe, and my product is a tap to share music card. So what these are, these are custom printed cards that are the same size as a credit card. And you tap it to the back of your phone, and it opens up a playlist, a song, a album, in Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, whatever provider you use. And so not only does this help individuals share their own playlists, but since I'm able to custom print these, um, I can print these for bands and get their art on these cards, and then they can sell it to their fans as an additional form of merchandise. And the other cool thing about these is the way I've um, set up the platform is you can do direct digital music downloads. So when you're buying a band's card, you know, it can be their album, their latest single, their latest EP. Um, not only do, are you buying the collectible item that lets you share with your friends, but you are also buying their music directly and not having to pay a third party such as Spotify, Apple, or Google. So that's my product, um, and thank you very much. Awesome, Trevor. All right, Laura, you're up. Here you go. Hi guys, my name is Laurie Deans. I am the founder and creator of Empowered Prints. I'm also the designer, so all the designs you see, that's me. Now, um, something about Empowered Prints. We are a black and ethnic inspired special occasion and birthday card company. It's kind of a mouthful. But our, uh, our mission statement is to bring inspiration, representation, and empowerment. Now, I wanna paint you guys a picture a little bit. Picture. Young girl, she's black, and she's trying to, she's, it's her birthday, and she gets a card, and it's her. It's a picture that looks like her. There's a picture that she feels that represents her, and that's really special. Um, being from Haiti, I'm originally from Haiti, it's kind of hard living here, looking a little different. We're going around town, and I look different. Don't know if you notice, a little, sh little shader, a little darker. But you know, with those trials and tribulations came inspiration motivation. And so this is what my company is about. We want to bring representation and inspire those, especially the minority and people of color. 
Um, and also we wanna, we wanna gather allies. I feel like it's not just minorities that need to feel welcomed. We need to educate, we need to have those hard conversations. We need to find the comfort and the discomfort. So that is my company, Empowered Prince. Let's inspire, represent, and empower. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ryan Smith and I'm the owner of Heritage Link. And at Heritage Link we create high quality coffee table style life histories and ancestry books. So if you think of genealogy or maybe a life history, maybe you picture something kind of outdated, a little older. Maybe it's like that 400 page book that your grandpa wrote about his life history. And what we want to do is we want to make it into a way that your family will actually read. And that's why it's in the coffee table format. So for the life history book, we interview over the phone your parent, your grandparent, and then we transcribe all of that and, and put in photos and put it in a concise format that your family's actually gonna read. You can imagine, you know, when, when someone's sitting down, your whole family's sitting down on the couch and on the table, there's a book that's all about your grandpa or your grandma. You're able to open it and then read some fun stories about that time when Grandpa took one of your uh, took your dad fishing, or Grandma baked these cookies that, and all these great memories that we can we can uh, preserve. And the other thing about the business is it's not just in a good format, but at a better and more affordable price. Uh, if you look at creating a nice quality coffee table book, you're usually somewhere in the four to nine thousand dollar price range. And so the difference with my business is we keep it between $500 and $1,500 so that people, more people are able to preserve their history because it's so important to preserve our parents and our grandparents, all those memories that we don't want to lose when they're gone. So I'm asking for the $200 to help with marketing. So I hope that you'll help me preserve our, the memories of our loved ones. Thank you. Okay, I have to grab something so fast. Does this take up my two minutes? Oh, oh, I'm shaking. Okay. okay, good. Okay, guys, I have a few questions for y'all, really quick. So my name's Megan Rasmussen, and I am not gonna introduce my business just yet, because I have a question. How many of you, let me just, Sit there, picture the day, the first day that you left college and you said goodbye to your mom. Like, just think about that. How many of you miss your mom? Raise your hand. Yeah. How many of you miss your mom's cooking? Raise your hand. More, more. How many of you would try a cinnamon roll that is better than your mom's cinnamon roll? Yeah, so that's, I'm the owner and operator of Better Than Your Mama's Bakery. <laughs> I make home-baked goods where I make cinnamon rolls, raspberry rolls, orange rolls, and cinnamon Oreos, and I cut these up, so if you guys want to try them, please come try them. This is, like, for you guys. I don't know what the rule on food is in here, but we won't say anything because Russ might get mad at me. But anyways, <laughs> so I looked at the market, and Angie's, you can get, like, a $5 cinnamon roll. Angie's pretty big. It's average. You can get cinnamon rolls that are cinnamon bun, still average. I mean, good, good, but average, you know. My cinnamon rolls is a brown butter center with a brown butter frosting, a very unique flavor that dates back to my great grandma's recipe. So it's something that I was taught all growing up. So what I would do with the $200 is I would put it towards money to rent a commercial kitchen. That's what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> so then I could increase rev or increase the make of my cinnamon rolls and so I can get them out to you faster because I actually come and sell on campus every single week. So if you come follow me at BT Yo Mama's Bakery at Instagram and go look at my website, BT Yo Mama's Bakery, <laughs> then you can get me and find me. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have. Uh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants cinnamon rolls? Anyone? Anyone? No one? Tate? <laughs> all right, one more round of applause for all four of the contestants. <laughs> Great job. Okay, um, a lot of you have logged off of Kahoot, so now is your time to get back on to Kahoot to vote. Because that used to say one, four, oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, good job. Keep doing that. 
Um, once it kind of stops going up, like now, oh, um, we're going to vote. Um, I think it just has their names on it, so we're going to go. We're going to vote. Let's do a vote now. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Exciting. Oh, countdown. Oh, I'm nervous. Who's going to win? Brand new Aggie business. Okay, we're going to, here comes a question. Here's the poll. All right, here we go. Favorite short pitch. Oh dang, the cool Kahoot, Kahoot music. We can't even hear it. Oh, can we unmute it? Yes, there it is. Okay, perfect. Okay, well, I mean, I, oh, 136 answers. How many people were there? 140 something? 148. Okay, that means a few of you haven't answered yet still. Here we go. And once it, once it pops up, let's do some clapping for the winner. Because it's just going to instantly show us, I think, who won. Oh, oh my gosh. Is there really? We might have to go to the whole time. 18 seconds. Tell somebody next to you that hasn't voted to hurry and go vote. They have 12 seconds. Oh, eight, seven, six. Oh my gosh, who is it? Okay, here we go. Who do we think it is? Music-based smart cards, all right. All right, so we have all these fun gift cards. So you guys come over here and we're gonna have you sign your life away saying you only spend this on important things. Um, but you can also forge other people, just kidding. Cool. All right, round of applause for the winners, guys. Yeah, yeah, come over here. Oh, no, go this way, go this way. Okay, cool. Um, while they're still deliberating, we're gonna talk about the seed program. Has th okay, just, I just wanna get a, a visual of raise, raise of hands of who's heard of seed. This is just who's heard of it. The USU seed program. Okay, heard. Okay, now keep your hand or raise it again if you know what it is. Not just heard of it, but you know what it is. Okay? Now, can you describe it in like a very short sentence out loud for everyone? Like, John, you raise your hand. Could you like yell? Like, what is the seed program in a sentence? And, and John's going on seed. Yes. Where are you going to go to seed? I'm going to the DR over the summer with my wife. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> right on. <laughs> okay, somebody, so I saw some hands over here too. Anybody want to add? Has anybody thought about doing it? Has anybody thought about doing it and not applied? Any hands? Is there something holding you back? Like, oh no, I don't have a wife to go to, <laughs> to seed with like John. I did it without a wife, and I'm doing just fine, <laughs> mostly. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll talk about something else. No, just kidding. So Paige just did seed also in Ghana, and I'm putting her on the spot because she's going to talk about going to Ghana. Talk about whatever you want. All right. I went to Ghana on seed. I loved it. It was a really cool experience. You just get to go for three months to a different country, you get to be part of people's culture, and just get to really be best friends with all the people you're gonna teach. It's an amazing experience. If you're thinking about doing it and haven't applied, the application deadline is on Sunday. The application's super, super easy. You can finish it in like 45 minutes. So if you're interested in doing it, go ahead and apply, because we would love to have you be a part of the program. Um, the next thing we're gonna talk about is our entrepreneurship social, which is happening tomorrow night. Um, I know Russell mentioned it earlier, but it's tomorrow night in the Huntsman Hall Courtyard at 5 p.m. We're going to have whip soda, a bunch of different prizes for different games that you can play. So if you guys have time tomorrow, or if you don't, make time, and you can come out and just hang out with us for the last day of Entrepreneurship Week. It's been a good week. And we are done with the judging. We're writing out the checks. <laughs> so we're going to bring the judges and the contestants back up.
Did we pick a winner? Trevor. Oh, Trevor. Where's Trevor? Did Trevor take off? Oh, so Trevor, Trevor, you won. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. While we're writing out these checks, what is this? Oh, it's the cinnamon rolls. Is that Megan's? Where's Megan at? Where's she? Is she back there, too? Okay. All right. We have with us, and I was going to check the school districts before, but you'll just kind of stand up. We have with us some of the top students uh, in high school and entrepreneurial students. So uh, you're, are, you, are you guys all back there? All the high school students, could you stand up, please? All right. So what school districts? We have Davis School District. Where's Davis? Right here. We got two from Davis. Tell us about what you were working on. Yeah, it's called Swollery. Swollery. Yeah, it's Jim Jewelry. Yeah, okay. All right. And, and you guys are all from the same. Are you Wasatch? All right. What are you working on? No, on the end here. Okay, so they're not doing, they're, they're planning the event. Are you all planners or anyone working on businesses? Okay, you two. Okay, so let's not talk to those two. What are you two, what are you guys working on? I'm doing mobile window Okay, mobile window tending. Okay. Videography. So, oh, yeah, you're connecting with uh, KG right there. Okay. All right, what are you working on? Okay, custom woodwork flags and so on. So if you're looking for something for Father's Day, that's right where to go. And on the end? Oh my goodness, did you bring some for us? Okay, so we got, so these are the next Aggies that are gonna be here in a few years. They're gonna be the ones wearing the jackets. Let's welcome them to the family. All right, you guys, when you're done, come on up here. We've got some sweaters for you and we just really wanna welcome you here and hope to, to see you guys here, you know, in the next year or two or whenever you're coming up here because we're gonna take care of you. That's what we do at Utah State. All right, so. Thank you for coming. Let's give him another round of applause. <clears throat> All right, so now it's the moment of truth. Uh, a lot of discussion back there always is. Uh, and, um, but it turns out uh, that you know, we have some really great businesses here. So let's give another round of applause for these incredible businesses that pitch with us today. All right, I'm gonna grab one check at a time, whatever's done. So. Who's back there? Is Paige back there? <laughs> Can you just hand me one check? All right. Oh, are you all done? Yeah. You are amazing. All right. Okay. So Emily, who is the check master, that's her uh, new job, uh, will bring out the checks. Let's start with, let's start with order. Okay. All right. So first of all, we want to recognize Photo Hive, which was our first picture. Let's give a round of applause for Photo Hive. Can uh, Cade and Josh, where'd you guys go? Oh, yeah, come on up. Somebody, I think, takes a picture. And so, come on up. We're going to hand you a big, fat check that you're going to never, you're, like, you're going to love. Why don't you bring on out, Emily? So, PhotoHive, we are giving $550 to PhotoHive. <laughs> oh, is it really? Okay, we'll do, yeah, let's go in the middle here. Yeah. All right. Okay, all right, thanks. All right, next. And like I said, when we're done, uh, the, the pitchers will come back here and the judges will meet with you and then the rest of you go back and get ice cream and they'll come on out. All right, who's next, Emily? Uh, who's next? Okay, Ag Records, come on up. Let's see, Ethan. All right, Emily, Ag Records has been awarded $1,250. Congratulations. Oh, do I have to get in here? All right, great. All right, next we have Sniffs. Sniffs, Tommy, come on up. They surprisingly really liked you, Tommy, with your Sniffs. $1,300, congratulations. All right, so any baseball players here? Yeah, go talk to Tommy when you're done. Okay. All right, next on up, we have Shake That Cake. Come on up. I thought that was a dance crew at first, but it turns out it's a dessert place. So come on over here and shake that cake. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I just thought, it, you know, somebody said that. All right. Okay, at $1,400 to Shake That Cake.
there's a bit of controversy because they clearly bribed the judges. So, all right. And Matt Granola, where are you? Maddie, come on up. <laughs> Another person who bribed the judges, they're back there snacking on Matt Granola at $1,500 for Matt Granola. <laughs> And come on up, Avid Epoxy. I think the, uh, the, the choose came in force. So uh, we have $2,000 to Avid Epoxy. All right. So we wish to, you know, again, thank the judges. We have uh, some gifts for the judges. First of all, um, Bison Paddles has given you all a pickleball paddle to say thank you for your support. And we also, wanna, we also have some blankets for you back here as well. Let's give another round of applause to these incredible judges, the work they did. Th thank you for an incredible year for the, entrepreneur, the leadership series and um, final papers. When are those due? Next week? Yeah. Okay, get those in. All right, go get some Aggie ice cream. Thanks, everyone.